Hello, in this video I'll be working through Unit 2 homework problems 18 through 21. Number 18, a certain function y equals p of x has its local linearization at a equals 3 given by l of x equals negative 2x plus 5. And we know that the local linearization is just another way of describing the tangent line. So in other words, the line that is tangent to this graph at a equals 3 or at the x coordinate 3 is given by the equation y equals negative 2x plus 5. That's the equation of our tangent line or the local linearization. Part A asks us to find the values of p of 3 and p prime of 3. Well, we know that p of 3 is equal to l of 3. p of 3 is referring to the point of tangency. And so to find l of 3, we just substitute x into the equation for l of x. So that would be negative 2 times 3, or negative 6, plus 5, equals negative 1. So p of 3 equals negative 1. At that point of tangency, the curve p of x and the tangent line intersect. So they have the same x-coordinate and same y-coordinate at that point. Now p prime of 3 is going to equal l prime of 3. The slope of the curve is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point of tangency. So to find L prime of 3, we can find the derivative of L of x and evaluate it when x is 3. Or if we recognize that this is a linear equation, L of x is linear, then we can read the slope right from the equation. The slope is negative 2. Part B, estimate the value of P of 2.79. Well, we can estimate p of 2.79 using our local linearization or using our tangent line. So that's going to be approximately equal to L of 2.79. p of x and L of x are exactly equal at the point of tangency, but as we move away from the point of tangency, then L of x is only approximating the value of p of x. Okay, and you can use your calculator to evaluate L of 2.79. We're just going to the equation for L of x, substituting 2.79 in for x, and that gives negative 0.58. Part C, suppose that P double prime of 3 equals 0, so the second derivative of P equals 0 at x equals 3 and that p double prime of x is less than 0 when x is less than 3. Is your estimate from part b too large or too small? Well, we were estimating the value of p when x was 2.79, and that's less than 3. So at that point on the graph of p, the second derivative is negative, and that tells us that p is concave down at that point. So the second derivative was equal to 0 at 3, but less than 3, is, the second derivative is negative. So concave down at the point where we were estimating. And that means that our tangent line lies above the curve. And so our approximation, since we were using the tangent line to approximate the value of the function, is going to be too high. So L of 2.79 that is going to be above the curve. That's greater than p of 2.79. And I know that because p is concave down at that point. Part D, suppose P double prime of X is greater than 0 when X is greater than 3. Use this fact and the additional information above to sketch an accurate graph of Y equals P of X near X equals 3. Include a sketch of L of X in your work. We have an equation for L of X, so we can sketch that pretty easily. L of X equals negative 2X plus 5. So we have a Y intercept at 5. And then the slope is negative 2. Okay. 
and I'll switch colors for P of X, we know that P of 3 equals negative 1. So we have a point right here. And the tangent line intersects the curve at that point. And we know the slope of the curve at that point is negative 2. We also know that our graph is concave down to the left of this point, and it's concave up to the right of this point. So this is, a, this is an inflection point. So I'm going to sketch concave down on the left, and then it switches right at this point and becomes concave up. So that is a possible graph of P of X. Number 19, a potato is placed in an oven and the potato's temperature, F, in degrees Fahrenheit at various points in time is taken and recorded in the following table. Time T is measured in minutes. Use a central difference to estimate F prime of 60. Use this estimate as needed in subsequent questions. So F prime of 60, we're going to estimate that by finding the slope of the secant line using two surrounding points. So I'm going to use these two surrounding points, 45 comma 296 and 75 comma 342.8. We're going to find the slope of the line that passes through those two points. Okay, so that's only going to approximate the value of f prime of 60. 342.8 minus 296 over 75 minus 45. And that is about 1.56 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. Part B, find the local linearization y equals L of t to the function y equals f of t at the point where a equals 60. So we're looking for the equation of the tangent line to the curve when x is 60. So L of t equals f of 60 plus the slope f prime of 60 times x minus 60. Or f of 60 we can get from the table is 324.5. So 324.5 plus f prime of 60 we estimated in part a so 1.56 times the quantity x minus 60 part c determine an estimate for f of 63 using the local linearization so f of 63 is going to be approximately equal to L of 63. And we're going to use the equation we got from part B to compute that. So 324.5 plus 1.56 times the quantity 63 minus 60. And there we should be getting 329.18. So that is our approximation for F of 63. And part D, do you think your estimate from part C is an over or under approximation? Now for that, we need to consider the second derivative. If we look at the change between time 45 minutes and time 60 minutes, that increases by 28.5. And then if we do the same thing from time 60 minutes to time 75 minutes, that is an increase of 18.3. So we, f of t is increasing, but it's increasing by a smaller and smaller amount. In other words, it's increasing at a decreasing rate. And that indicates that the function is concave down. And if the function is concave down, then our local linearization is an overestimate. So f of t 
is increasing at a decreasing rate at t equals 60. Therefore, f of t is concave down at that point. Hence, the local linearization, or I can say the tangent line, lies above the curve, giving an over approximation. Number 20, an object moving along a straight line path has a differentiable position function y equals s of t. It is known that at time t equals 9 seconds, the object's position is s equals 4 feet, and that's measured from its starting point at t equals 0. Furthermore, the object's instantaneous velocity at t equals 9 is negative 1.2 feet per second, and its acceleration at the same instant is 0.08 feet per second per second. Part A, use local linearity to estimate the position of the object at t equals 9.34. We're told that the position at time t equals 9 seconds is 4 feet. So s of 9 equals 4. And then we're told that the velocity, which is the rate of change of position with respect to time, is negative 1.2 feet per second. So that's going to be the first derivative. s prime at 9 is negative 1.2 feet per second. And we're also told at that same moment in time, the acceleration is positive 0.08. And that's the derivative of the velocity. So in other words, our second derivative of s at t equals 9 is 0.08 feet per second per second, or feet per second squared. To write the local linearization, we need to know s of 9, and we need to know s prime of 9. So L of t equals s of 9, which is 4, plus the slope, or s prime of 9, which is negative 1.2, times t minus our t value, which in this case is 9. And then we want to use our local linearization to estimate the position at t equals 9.34. So L of 9.34 is 4 minus 1.2 times 9.34 minus 9. And simplifying that gives 3.592 feet. Is that estimate likely to be too large or too small? Well, at that point, the second derivative is positive, meaning our position function is concave up. And if our position function is concave up, then our tangent line must be below the curve. So it is an underestimate. So too small. Since s of t is concave up at t equals 9 seconds. Part C in everyday language describe the behavior of the moving object at time t equals 9 seconds. Is it moving towards its starting point or away from it? Is its velocity increasing or decreasing? The velocity is negative, so we know it's moving back towards its starting position. And in order to determine if the velocity is increasing or decreasing, we would look at its derivative. The acceleration is positive, which tells me that my velocity is increasing. 
So the object is moving back towards its starting point. And I know this because s prime is less than zero. And it's moving at an increasing rate. And I know this because s double prime is greater than zero. Number 21, the function below is such that h of four equals 25 and h prime of four equals 1.5. Find the coordinates of a, b, and c. Well, points a, b, and c all lie on the line that's tangent to the curve at x equals four. If we want to write the equation of the tangent line using point slope form, then it would look like y minus 25, that's the y coordinate of our point of tangency, equals 1.5, that's the slope of the tangent line, times x minus the x coordinate of the point of tangency, so x minus four. Or if we want to write it in the local linearization form, it would be L of x equals 25 plus 1.5 times x minus four. It's the same equation, just written in a slightly different form. We already know the coordinates of point A for 25, that was given. And now to find the coordinates at point B, we know the x coordinate is 3.9 and to get the y coordinate, we're just going to substitute 3.9 into our tangent line equation or the local linearization equation. So L of 3.9 equals 25 plus 1.5 times 3.9 minus four, which is 24.85. And then point C has an x coordinate of 4.2. So L of 4.2 would be 25 plus 1.5 times 4.2 minus four, which is 25.3. So 4.2 comma 25.3.